to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter number 2, look at verse number 4. Can you find Mark, find Matthew, and then the next chapter is Mark, chapter number 2. Look in verse number 4, only read one passage. You can't find it, look at the monitor, it's up there. St. Mark's Gospel, the second chapter, verse number four. When you're there, say, I have his word. <clears throat> it says, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy Lane. I think y'all missed that. I'm saying, I'll, I'll, I'll read again for you. Watch this now. It says, I'm going to give it to you in the LES verse. And because they could not get in, because it was too crowded, jam packed, no room. That's my kind of church. They began to rip off the roof. Now, I know most of y'all know the Parliament song say, tell the roof off the sucker. <laughs> Notice the person might say, tell the, the, the roof off. It said, and when they uncovered the roof where he was, the Bible says, they tore it up. Somebody said, you got to tear it up. They let down the man had the issue. Watch this now. They let down the man who had the issue. But in order to get the man with the issue to where Jesus was, and here is my title right here, their faith had to break the house rules. Look at the person by the time and say, neighbor, when faith, when faith breaks the house rules. Let's pray. Father, our God, today I thank you for this time of sharing your word with these people. And Father, there is already a supernatural glory in this house. Father, I pray that you would strengthen these just sheep. Father, strengthen my body. That I may, God, give them what you have given me. Father, I pray that you would allow their hearts and their, their minds to receive the seed of the word of God. I bless you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Somebody say amen. amen. You may have your seat in the house of the Lord. When faith breaks the house rules. One of the things you won't hear too often in Christendom is you won't always hear a pastor or a preacher. You won't hardly ever hear them okay you to break the house rules. As a matter of fact, it is almost an oxymoron in itself to, to say something good can come out of something that seems to be bad. As a matter of fact, how many of you understand that it's not always okay to break rules? So the person about to say, it's not good to break rules. Because understand, rules are governing laws, brother Rice. They are governing laws that help keep order in any organization. Amen. Rules are designed to help keep things together. And the truth be told, and it should be told, one of the reasons many of us get in trouble in our lives is because we don't always like to follow the rules. Right. You know somebody right. tells me, you got to follow the rules. But you all, when I look at the life of Jesus, you all, one of the habits Jesus had, Pastor Mars, Jesus had a habit of breaking rules. Now, Jesus said it clear. He said, I did not come to change the law, but to fulfill it. But there's something happens when Jesus decides to break the rules. Pastor, what do you mean when Jesus break the rules? You recall the Bible in 
the Bible where Jesus, you all, he healed a man on the Sabbath day. Now, in order for them to make sense, you must understand that they were told that you could not work on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, if your your animal, your beast was caught up into uh, an accident, would you not do whatever it takes to go and rescue that animal? In other words, you would you be willing to break the rules even though you knew it was not conducive to the Mosaic law to work on the Sabbath day. But Jesus, the Bible said, healed the girl and he broke the rules. Somebody said, break the rules. Understand, Jesus, you all, he went to the well and understand, the Bible says, that at the well there was a woman uh, that he ministered to. Now understand, this was not an ordinary woman. This was a girl who spent her life going from man to man to man trying to get her knees met. But it, it makes further sense when you understand that a priest or a Jew, uh, rather, was not allowed or the law says that they should not have dealings with women, women, especially those women who were of Samaria or Samaria. And so it was simply said because they were not of the same culture, then because you didn't believe like I believe, you did not then have the right to talk to a priest or a rabbi. But here it is, Jesus says, I must need go through Samaria. And then he did something to me that was interesting, Brother Reds. He sent his disciples away to go and get something to eat. I've learned that sometimes you got to get folk out your life in order to touch someone else's life. Oh, can I talk to somebody? See, sometimes we are so concerned and consumed about other folks' opinion, and when God wants to touch you, Use you to touch someone else's life. Everybody don't see what God wants to do through you. And so what he had to do then was send his disciples away. And the Bible said that he went to a well in the middle of the day. And you were saying, Pastor, what's wrong with going to a well in the middle of the day? Well, see, you living in Chicago, they live over in the Middle East. And in the middle of the day was declared the hottest time of the day. Now understand that it was not the custom of a day to go draw water from the well. But listen, when you are a woman, who you are, I mean, you, you, everybody's woman. I can see you had one man, but you, you, everybody's girl. In other words, your man is Bobby, Ronnie, Nicky, and Mike. Come on, you got, you, 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 you got Tito, Jermaine, Jackie. Come on. Well, I mean, you got everybody for your man. And here it is, this girl goes to Jesus, and he, he now meets us, her at this well, and, and now he begins to give her dialogue. And he, he now begins to address this girl's issue. Watch this now. Remember now, he came to touch her. She did not come to touch him. Have anybody ever came to church and said, Lord, if you can just touch me any kind of way. Come on, say, Lord, Lord, I want you to touch me in any kind of way. See, understand, this girl did not come for a touch, but Jesus understood that I'm going to a well, and at that well, when I talk to this girl, I am going to break a rule, but someone needs a touch that is tangible, and if I got to break a rule, then I'll break a rule to touch her. Somebody said, he'll break a rule, he'll break a rule. Uh, you recall when Jesus was in a storm uh, with the disciples in the Bible said he was walking on the water and he might have passed them who were in the ship. And the Bible says here comes now Peter saw him walking and thought it was a ghost. But watch this. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, he said, break a rule. Y'all ain't feeling Lord, if that's you, if that's you, Lord, if that's really you, what I want you to do is break a rule. Pastor, what do you mean break a rule? Lord, I know that it is not natural for me to get out of this boat and walk on water. As a matter of fact, Lord, every time I tried to walk on water, I found myself sinking. Let me ask you, anybody ever felt yourself sinking over the course of your life? Come on, anybody ever tried to go up in life and look like the more you fought to go up, you kept going down. But touch the person by them saying he will break a rule just for you. Understand, Peter said, Lord, if that's you, I need you to break a rule. And Jesus said, it's broke. Come. Oh, y'all missed that. 
He said, no room is broken, come. Pastor, what do you mean? In other words, the moment Jesus broke the rule, everything else lined up with the rule. That's the way he's trying to say. I'm simply saying that when he told Peter to come and Peter stepped out the boat, I don't know what the molecules did, and I'm not sure what the atoms did, but all I know is that when Peter stepped out the boat, things began to happen and things came together that Peter had the ability to walk on what could not be walked on. And I came to tell somebody that God is changing your life around for the better and tell God things that you could not walk on. God is getting ready to give you some water walking things. Is there anybody in the house that said, Lord, I look like I can't go get nowhere but God and you can break a rule for me? God break the rule. Oh, they said, I'm bankrupt and I went and don't make it, but God break a rule. They said I couldn't be healed, but God break a rule. Somebody said, break it, break it, break it, break it. So I came and tell somebody this morning that God wants to bless you so bad, child of God, that he's willing to break the rule to bless your life. Oh, would you encourage the person by come and say, neighbor, God wants to bless you so bad that he'll break a rule in order to bless your life. Come on and clap your hands and give God glory right there. Come on. You see, when, 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 when I was a little boy, you know, my mama, she, she, had, she had eight children. You know, some of you, 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 you have one or two children. And you know, your, your one or two kids hate to follow rules. Well, you can imagine how it is when you got eight kids. And every now and then, all of us decided at the same time. Uh, we ain't going to follow the rules. It doesn't matter how you can break the rules, knowing the consequence of the rule, and break it anyway. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. Okay, let me come down the road. All of us know that when you break the rule of eating Twinkies in the middle of the night. <laughs> come on, and every now and then, some of us have these habits of that, that when we walk by the fridge on the way to the bathroom, and we know that we are on the third day of our, of our, of our two-day diet. Y'all missed that. Come on, you're on day three of your two-day diet, and you know there's something in the fridge that's going to mess you all the way up, but something tells you, go ahead and break the rule, and then you got to spend 10 days trying to get rid of calories you got in 10 minutes. Maybe it just me. But understand, see, when I was a little boy, when Mama gave us rules, we understood that, that Mama had to give us rules in order to maintain order in the house. You see, you can't raise eight babies and not have rules in the house. Especially when you got a few hard-haired boys and a, and a few little girls who every now and then start tripping. Oh, come on, any of y'all got some kids in your house that every now and then they start tripping? Oh, y'all ain't talking about me. I know because you don't want your child to know that you know they're a trip. But all the folks who know your kid are a trip to say, Pastor, I know that's right. I know that's right. And so understand, even in the Bible, the Bible says that where there is no order, there is no vision, the people will only exercise restraint. God says, where there is no order, when folk do whatever they want to do in the house of God, he simply says, this is the Elias version, when folk don't follow rules, they're going to act a fool anyway. Yeah. Come on, anybody know a few folk who want to act a fool anyway? Yeah. And the hard part about not having any restraint in the house of God is that sometimes we pull a few folk to act a fool with us, and before you know it, you got a whole colony of folk having their own service, having their own church, acting a fool their own way, all by themselves. But that is not the plan of God. God says, when I break a rule, my broken rule is designed to pull you up and bring you out of a hard place. I don't know, is there anybody here who wants God to bring you up and bring you out of a 
one, they called Jesus the prince of demons. Yes. All right. They said, Jesus, you, you, you be healthy, boy. I mean, you might have put their hand up in his face, say, Jesus, you be healthy, boy. You're the prince of the devil. And I can see Jesus stepping and say, hold on, Glenn. Hold up. All right. All right. Demons got rules. <laughs> Pastor Whale, in the Bible, he says, he says, a house divided right. against itself yes. cannot stand. He said, demons have order. Demons, the baby demons ain't going to fight Satan. Even general demons ain't going to fight Satan. Whatever Satan said to do, every demon going to do what the devil, the demon daddy said to do because they have order. I wonder, when will the children of God ever find order in the house of God? Sometimes there needs to be order in the house of God. But understand, the only time God allows you to break rank or to break order is when God wants to give you a breakthrough. Is there anybody in the house who said, God, I need a breakthrough in my life? Oh, God, if you only knew what I've been through this week, oh, I need a breakthrough. I've been under emotional duress. I need a breakthrough. My mind been stressed out. I need a breakthrough. My money been funny and my chains been strained. I need a breakthrough. These folk in my house been getting on my last nerve. I need a breakthrough. Glory to God. 
But watch this. The Bible says that Jesus was in a house that was already jam-packed. And here it is, a man who was in trouble, who wanted to be healed, could not get in to get his healing. You must understand that in this text, this man, you all, write this down. What you see here is a man whose life was restricted to a downward position. Pastor, what do you mean he was limited to a downward position? In other words, the Bible says this man was paralyzed. And the only thing he was accustomed to in his life is only laying down. Can you imagine in your mind when you want to get up and go play soccer or play basketball with the kids, but you can't get up? Can you imagine being at home and all your friends hanging out in the, in the park someplace, but you can't get up? Can you imagine when you see everybody else run down the street and to them it's normal, but something is happening in your life where your normal is no longer normal, and what you really need, y'all ain't talking about me, and what you really need in your life is God, I need a miracle, and when you come for your miracle, it looks like you can't get one. But I came and tell somebody in the house this morning, the child of God, I don't care what the devil is doing in your life. God has a miracle way, and it's got your name on it. Is there anybody in the house who says, God, I need a miracle, and I need it right now? Somebody shout now. See, what do you do? What do you do when your life is on a downward spiral? Come on, I don't spend that now, now, I know some of y'all, you've been saved right. a billion years, but what do you do when, when you are saved and your life goes on a downward spiral? Yes, yes. Come on, anybody ever have a habit in your life and you look up, see, 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 it was good when you were doing the habit, but the habit ruined your life. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Come on. Anybody ever been struggling with an issue in your life and it was good while you were doing it, but over time, that thing you thought you got by with now is tearing your life down. What do you do? When life seemed to be going on a downward spiral. Come on. What do you do when it looks like Situations have the upper hand in your life, and nobody understands. All right, all right. Let me ask you, have any of y'all ever had some stuff going on in your world, and look like nobody talked to you, understood what you were? Maybe it's just me. You want to you wanna explain how things are. You want to tell somebody, let, let me tell you what's really going on in my world. And look like everybody you tell, nobody understands what you're going through. Somebody shout and say, what did you do? What did you do? What do you feel do when you feel like you are stuck in a situation that you don't think you will ever come out of? I was telling somebody on you yesterday that all these single folk talking about I can't wait to get married, but you got some married folk talking about I can't wait till they die. Oh, dear God, I can't wait to get me a husband. I can't wait, God, to get me a wife. Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of being, I'm sorry. You can't, you can't wait to get somebody. Uh, you, want, you want to go and knock boots with somebody. You can't wait to be in the bed and y'all rub ticket toes together. But all oh, after a few folk who've been married about 25, 35, 40 years, so there is there a time in your life where you can't stand them. Oh, yeah, I love you, but right now I can't stand Thank you. 
do this for you and that for you. And they tell you, I'm leaving. Right? It is easy to get depressed over their leaving before they leave. Here it is, this man, he heard that Jesus had just healed someone else's friend who had who was paralyzed. But now Jesus is now leaving town. I can imagine this man getting depressed and saying, Dear God, I missed my moment. Anybody ever felt like you missed your moment? Come on, maybe it's just your pastor. Anybody ever felt like you missed your season? You missed the time when God wanted to give you a major breakthrough? Come on, anybody ever came to church and you had all kind of stuff running through your mind and when other folk around you were getting a breakthrough? You sat right there and did nothing when everybody around you was saying glory to God? You said nothing when folk around you was throwing up their hands and you said nothing? Is that anybody here who ever went home and said, Lord, I think I missed my moment? And here's the thing, y'all. Jesus is gone. And I'm sure in his mind he said, I missed my moment. While he was healing, I missed my moment. While he was giving somebody a breakthrough, watch this now, Jesus didn't even go to the man's house. The Bible said he sent the word. The other guy who needed the same breakthrough missed his moment. What do you do when you are with Jesus and miss your moment? The Bible says, when he heard, it was noise that Jesus was back. Right. <laughs> Ooh, baby, I came to tell somebody that the next time you come to church and you don't feel like praying to God, just come back the next time. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna push your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you miss him this week, just come back next week. He'll be in the house. If you miss him tomorrow, just come on back. He'll be in the house. Somebody say, be in the house, be in the house, be in the house. See, understanding all this man, his mind was so messed up that he thought that maybe Jesus is not going to ever come back. And sometimes when you're going through a thing so long, watch this now, the devil will try to give you a mental Breakdown. Now, don't raise your hand, but how many of you ever felt like you were getting ready to have an emotional breakdown? Listen, this is why just because folks come to church and say, Pastor, I'm blessed. Pastor, I'm doing fine. Listen, sometimes folk come to church and they're on the edge. Maybe it's just me. Anybody ever came to church and you were on the cusp of doing something stupid to yourself and the devil is telling you, you may as well give up. You may as well throw in the towel because if God really loved you, he will fix it yesterday. But I came to encourage somebody. You may feel like you were on the edge, but maybe God knows how to pull you back. God knows how to rescue you and bring a deliverance in your life. See, what's this? The devil, the devil loves nothing more than to give God's children a nervous breakdown. On the news the other day, here it is a paramedic, a man who has a prominent job, a good job working for the city. This man went and set, set a house on fire, went to the basement, put a bullet in his own head. Here was the problem. He didn't die. Which means then that now the house is on fire. And now he has to live in a hell before he goes to hell. Y'all ain't feeling me. I said he was the one who set the house on fire. And then went downstairs, put a bullet in his own head. He assumed that the fire would burn all the evidence. And when they put the fire out, he was in the basement, still charcoal. He was still smoking from the smoke he created. I wonder how many of us have to live through a fire we created for 
for ourselves. And the devil is trying to give you a nervous breakdown by making you believe you deserve what you got. But I came to tell you, child God, that when you come to God and you bring that in to God, I don't care what you did, what you thought, what dumb thing you did, God will find a way. Sometimes he'll find a way, he'll find a way. You see, this is why it's important to know to bind the devil in your life. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's important to know how to bind the devil in your life. Because when you're feeling stressed out, when you're feeling like nobody cares, is there anybody here that ever felt stressed out? Is there anybody here that ever felt like nobody cares? like it. Nobody understood where you were coming from. And the devil was taking you down. But the Bible says that when you know what to do to get the devil off your back, I heard Jesus says, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Look at your neighbor and tell the neighbor, I got keys. And these keys are
but I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to go to my seat, but I feel Jesus in this place. Can I tell you one more thing? You see, just because some of you gamblers will understand this, just because you loan chips don't mean you can't break the house. You have no clue what I'm talking about. Unless you've been to the horseshoe. Unless you've been to the gas station. Anybody could have been down to your last stop. You see, in 1993, there was a man by the name of Archie. Corey, he was down on his luck. He had just blew twenty thousand dollars in Las Vegas, and all he had was one chip. Somebody shot one chip. If all you had was a little bit enough, say one chip. And the story goes, Veronica, he had one chip left, and one man said, "Cash it in and go home." But. Oh! 
today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is the seventh weekend after Easter. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost got for the come, they were all in one place, but with one accord. Come they all in all in one place.
all the quiet people who are too dignified, too reserved to break a rule. The Bible talks about a rich man who would not break a rule. He kept all the other rules, but when Jesus invited him outside of his natural roots. Jesus said, come on, break a rule. Said, all of this stuff you got, go and sell it. And give it away. He said, no, Lord. I can't break that rule. And he went away sad. Because what he had had him. It is possible to be so reserved that the glory when it lifts, I miss my moments. Hear me, blind Bartimaeus. Dolly, Bible said blind Bartimaeus broke a rule. Because it is customary that when the priest or the rabbi is coming, you pay homage to the rabbi. Everybody's quiet in case he wants to say something. But blind Bartimaeus, the Ronica was blind so long. Yes. He said, I know what the custom is, but I'm going to break a rule. And the Bible says that he began to yell. All right. All right. He says, Jesus, thou son of David.
But if another person fighting, come say every now and then. You gotta break a rule. Come on, give God a hand, press anybody else.